Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video we're going to continue our series looking at the subject of AC theory. Now before we fill in any more information on the worksheet that we generated for this series of videos, we're just going to have a look at an AC supply in itself. We're going to consider what AC electricity is, how we generate it. Now in order to help us to achieve this, we're going to use the truly excellent Tinkercad produced by Autodesk. Uh, and I can recommend that if you are uh, vaguely interested in getting started in looking at CAD, this is not a bad way of starting to get involved. It's free software that you can play with, uh, and maybe perhaps even if you've got children who are interested in this, it could be a good way of getting them into computer-aided design. So I've built here what is basically a very, very simple AC generating machine. If we look at the, the different parts that we've got, you can see that we've got a... Uh, magnetic field. We've got a north pole of a magnet here and a south pole of a magnet here. So between these two magnets there will be lines of magnetic flux that will be invisible to the naked eye. However, they're very much there and of course we know that lines of magnetic flux go from north to south. Now the idea of a generator is it's a machine that turns mechanical energy or movement into electrical energy. And in this case this is uh, achieved by spinning round uh, this section here. So this whole part here is just a loop of a conductive material. It's basically a wire that's been wrapped into a loop. And what happens inside a generator is this loop is spun round and round and round like so. Now you'll find many of the similar components inside a DC generator as well, but what makes all the difference between an AC and a DC generator are these devices here and here. These are what are known as slip rings. And what you can see is that the ends of the loop of the conductor are actually connected inside the slip ring. So this end of the loop is connected onto this slip ring and this end of the loop is connected onto this slip ring here. Now let's consider what happens when we spin this conductor round. So we'll spin it round in an anti-clockwise direction. Now let's just consider first of all what happens when we're at this kind of angle here. So if this loop is rotating in a uh, anti-clockwise direction, as you can see here it's going round and round in this direction like this, what happens is that as the uh, conducting loop moves past the uh, north pole, as it cuts through the lines of magnetic flux that we can't see but we know are there, what happens is that some electricity is generated inside the conductor and we've demonstrated that principle in other videos. Now applying what's known as Fleming's right hand rule for generators, we can figure out which direction the current will be going in. So let's look at this end on, so it's almost like we're looking at this as if it was a cross section, we will look at an actual cross section of this later. But let's just have a look at this here now. So you can see that the conductor here, as it moves past the North Pole, it will be moving to the left. So it's moving to the left of that North Pole. Now in Fleming's right hand rule we use our thumb to show the direction of movement of the conductor, our first finger shows the direction of the magnetic field from north to south, and our second finger shows the direction of current flow. So in this case, in the top part of the conductor here, the current would be flowing towards us. What about in the bottom half of the conductor? Well, let's have a look at that now and see what's happening there. So the bottom half of the conductor, again, if this is rotating, this whole thing is rotating anti-clockwise, you can see that the direction of movement of the conductor is to the right. So let's apply Fleming's right-hand rule again. Fleming's right-hand rule states that the uh, thumb of the right hand indicates the direction of movement of the conductor. The first finger is the direction of the magnetic field from north to south. And so the second finger has now completely switched its direction and is pointing away from us. So in this bottom conductor, the current is flowing away from us. So that means that if we look at this sort of sideways on now, we can see that within the loop, the current is flowing away from us in the bottom conductor and then in this direction towards us in the top conductor. So if we trace that path on the external part of the generator that's feeding this uh, electric lamp here, we can see that the current will go round this way, round this way through the loop, and then it will pass through this slip ring 
and go in this direction through the lamp, through that conductor, through the lamp, and then back into the circuit this way, onto that slip ring, which is connected onto the bottom conductor now, and would go off in that direction. So the current would be flowing in that direction. However, as the loop continues round and gets to this position here, the direction of the uh, loop hasn't changed. It's still going in an anti-clockwise direction. But what's happened is the connection of the slip rings has kind of slightly altered things. So if we apply the same principle, if we look at the top conductor, we can see that when the uh, loop is going in an anti-clockwise direction, we can see there uh, that once again, the conductor is moving to the left. We can see that the north to south magnetic flux is going from top to bottom on the screen and the current would be coming towards us in the top conductor. And again, if we look at what's going on in the bottom part of the conductor again, we can see there that the current, as this moves in an anti-clockwise direction, we can see that the loop is moving once again from left to right. Uh, so it's moving from left to right, so that's the direction of movement. The lines of magnetic flux are once again from north to south, so the current would be going away from us. So the current is once again going around this loop in this direction. Let's follow it out. Can you see now what's different is that because now this top part of the loop is actually on this slip ring connected to this external part of the circuit, the current is now going in the opposite direction around the circuit like that, through the lamp, back into this slip ring, and through that conductor there. And once again, the current's going away from us through the bottom part of the loop, up round, and it keeps on going that way. So what you can see is that actually, as this loop continues to spin round and round and round, like this, the current is constantly changing its direction. For part of the cycle, it's going this way through the conductor, and then for the rest of the cycle, it changes its direction and it goes back in the other direction. So once again, that re-emphasized point as to why we get uh, the change in direction of the current. That's why we get an AC or alternating current. So this continues to spin round and round and round, generating AC current for us. And really the important point to bear in mind here is that because this is spinning round and round and round, the relationship between uh, the current produced and the waveform that it produces is actually all related to circles and triangles. Now I know that triangles part might be a little bit tricky, but we can see here, we can understand that we get in rotational movement, circular movement, which means that we've got something that's going to relate to circles when we look at the next part of this. So we've established that the AC current produced is all down to the slip rings. The reason that we get AC current is because of these slip rings. But why does that produce what's called a sine wave? Why is the waveform called a sine wave? Well, let's try and figure that out next. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a cross section uh, of our machine here. So I'm just going to reduce a hidden object that I've hidden before, and then I'm going to turn this all into one big giant uh, object, which will hopefully give me a nice cross section of this. So you can see there what's happened is we've taken away a big chunk of this. And if we look at this end on now, you can see there that we've got a cross section of our uh, machine. So we've still got the, the North Pole, the magnetic field at the top. We've got the South Pole uh, at the bottom. And if we now look at this in terms of uh, rotation, what we're going to do now is go over to a slightly different program. We're going to look at a different website and we're going to see how this cross section can help us to understand why an AC waveform is the shape that it is. And that will feature in our next video.